So where do we begin? To be able to race is probably one of the most difficult, challenging things for any aviator to do. You're in such close proximity and you have such tiny margin should anything happen that it takes an immense amount of skill and training to do this. You know, to be able to fly something like this, an L-39 or a fast jet in the air races, or really any of these more complex aircraft, you have to be thinking 10, 12 steps ahead of the aircraft in case something happens. 6 8 to Mayday, we're going 3-2. 0 5 People still want to see that. They want to see that excellence and they want to see these great pilots and racers give them an experience that you can't get anywhere else. Well, yeah, you know, I, I get there, of course, and I'm just wandering around all these different planes and the next thing I know, they take off and they fly around together and I'm going, holy cow, <laughs> this is really cool. My name is Marilyn Newton. I attended the races for all 59 years because they started the races the year after I went to work for the newspaper here. So I shot roughly, and it varied 3,000 shots a day. That's close to a million photos that I've shot of the races. And there's finish line with T6s. I just shot that this past year. Oh yeah, me and T6 with T6s. And then, of course, my favorite thing is I always got to go to the pylons. And I love shooting from top of home pylon. And it's really cool because those planes are coming right at you. What are the pylons? Or what are they for? That's what they fly around. That's the race course. The pylons actually, they're the big poles with the barrels on top and that's what the pilots look for. The current course at Reno is 525 miles an hour at a five and a half G turn. So when we lay out a course, we calculated what is the radius of that turn in order to create five and a half G's of horizontal movement. And the reason that's important is if something comes off that airplane or the plane comes apart, that object immediately goes to zero G and then we project where that goes in order to set the safety boundaries on the course. My name is Matt Setti. I was sort of born into the September family. At 52 years old, I've attended 45 races. You know, what we, what we do in this racing arena is unique in the world because it's essentially, they've called it NASCAR in the sky, but it's the only racing in the world where we have multiple aircraft on a closed course at the same time. You know, we fly low, fly fast, turn left. That's always been a moniker at Reno. So the interesting thing about being a pilot is you really have to have a bad memory and also a good one because you want to be able to forget the things that made you incredibly scared so you can continue flying. Um, but you really have to remember what made you scared or feeling unsafe in the first place because you want to never do that again or mitigate that and make sure that you are safe and doing the right things in training. It wasn't long after the Wright brothers, somebody wanted to beat somebody from A to B. And uh, so it was a mystique that uh, I'm faster than you are. And I think that that essence of that grew. You're gonna race around a pylon course, not from city to city, 
from pylon one to two to three to four. Every September, the clear desert sky near Reno, Nevada is filled with the roar of powerful racing engines. This is the site of the national championship air races. To enter, the plane must have a propeller and a piston engine. Other than that, the sky is the limit. Reno was out in the dirt first year, first two years. I was the uh, original announcer in 1964. Billstead had a big piece of property out there and he was leased out a portion of it to uh, some Army Air helicopter training. Well, that's where the first race began. Dust, dirt, wind blew, did we care? No. The first year in 64, we had a lot of the Cleveland people who were involved, and the whole thing was just ignited by those people. It was, it was just something you couldn't... It happened, and you said, did I dream? Did I dream it happened? Here we were following the footsteps right after World War II. And these were the fastest airplanes and propeller-driven in the world. There comes a point at 500 miles per hour when it's not just a race, but a passion that defies the boundaries of time and sanity. A single heartbeat between man and machine, the world slows around you. You're not racing, but dancing in flight, propelling you beyond the ordinary. You have to you have to think about it every day. If if you don't, I mean, you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel when you first start, right? Everybody, it's what everybody wants to do. Everybody says, oh, "I would love to fly piston fighters. I would love to fly a Mustang. I would love to fly a Sea Fury." It's way easier to say than it is to do. Um, there's really only two paths. You can you got to earn it one way or the other. You can earn enough money so that you can pay for it, or you got to earn it from somebody who can afford it or who has the access to to give that to you. You know, pay your dues with them, and that's the route I did because I could never afford to do any of this stuff on my own. This was my first year, 2023, uh, which is the last year of Reno, of course. And uh, it was kind of a wild ride. Flew in my first race on Friday, and then I flew in my last race on Saturday, um, the last race at Reno. So it was like 10 days of crazy. I got two races on the course and ended up with a second place trophy in the unlimited gold, which I'm very proud of. And it's all because of what I learned here. Never thought I'd get that opportunity. Not in a million years. The whole thing? No, not the whole thing. Only Just the bracketed parts? Just the bracketed parts. It is with heavy hearts we write this to let you know. After nearly 60 years of air racing in northern Nevada. 2023 will be our last national championship air races at the Reno State Airport. While we knew this day might come, we had hoped it wouldn't come as soon. Citing the region's significant growth, amongst other concerns, the Reno-Tahoe Airport Authority has made the decision to sunset the event. For so many around the world, Reno has become synonymous with air racing, and it is hard to imagine the national championship air races gracing any other skies than those in the Sierra Nevadas. The last national championship air races will take place September 13th through the 17th. We look forward to seeing you in September. You know, I think that from a community, from a person that, that lives here, has built my businesses here, um, it's a sad day for us because we had an identity associated with racing. Every year you had the ability to walk through those pits and kind of dream about what it would be like to power up a V12 Merlin. And all of us that grew up within the umbrella of racing, you know, we knew these planes like, like kids know football players. There is definitely an economic impact. I mean, thousands of people came to see the, the air races. It was a significant thing for the, for the city to do this. So that's another thing is, why do you get rid of something that's so economical? Aircraft racing 
has inherent risks. And part of the problem with racing fast and low to the ground is when something goes wrong, things tend to go wrong fast and catastrophically. We, we knew this day was coming in, in some way or another. I just wish it weren't this year. You know, if we stopped trying to go to the moon when people, when people died, we never would have gone. If, we, if we'd stopped trying to climb Mount Everest when people died, we never would have climbed it. You know, everybody who died racing, not a single one of them, if you could ask them, would say, oh man, these races should stop because I died, you know, that sucked. You guys should stop doing that, it's dangerous. Not a single one of those guys would say that. So part of why we race and why we continue to do this is for them. You know, and those conversations are difficult to have, especially in the moment. That's the answer, I mean. Unfortunately, the human factor that in Reno is, for many of us that love racing and accept the inherent risks of racing, feel like they confuse, like I said earlier, they confuse being alive with living. A lot of us want to live, not just be alive. Even if I never got to race again, I'd still go if the races were happening, but it's just because the sport is one thing, but the family is another, and they're, they come together. Like I said, it only happens 10 days a year, and they all come together, and uh, you see people you haven't seen in a year, and you pick right back up where you left off. I used to ask everybody, you know, on like Sunday race day, uh, when I was first started crewing, I'd go around asking anybody, where on the world would you rather be today? You can go anywhere in the world. Where would you rather go today? Reno Stead. I mean, there, there's nothing, there's, there's nowhere else to go on race day. It's, it's where you want to be. So that's why I think they call it the September family. It's just what it is. Hold on and don't let go